I'm Lee Smith, and welcome to Words That Matter, our debut show. And we couldn't have a more wonderful guest today. Um, this is a friend. This is a colleague. This is someone. Um, this is a hero. Uh, I, I wrote my book, Plot Against the President. That was a book about, wasn't just a book about deep state corruption. It was a book about American heroes. Um, Jack Langer, um, Damon Nelson, a full cast of great Americans who stood up and uncovered the biggest political scandal in U.S. history. This man, the great Cash Patel, who led the investigation and uncovered the deep state and revealed to us things we never could have possibly imagined before. And now he's got a brand new book out. And again, I couldn't be more thrilled than to open up our show, Words That Matter, with the man that matters, Mr. Cash Patel. And here's the book, Government Gangsters. Cash, do you got a copy? Do Hold it up. There you go. It's the real. deep state, the truth, <laughs> and the battle for our democracy. Cash Pramod Patel. Cash, first of all, congratulations on the book. Second of all, thanks for being uh, the guest on our, on, on our first show here, Words That Matter. Welcome. Well, Lee, I'm extremely humbled. Um, your friendship and mentorship um, these past years has led in large part to this all book. Right. So it's your responsibility. If it tanks, I'm blaming <laughs> yeah, you. Right. Uh, well, look, it, but, it looks uh, beautiful. What the first thing I want to ask you about? I want to get. I want to get to the. I want to get to the book itself. But the first thing I want to ask you about is, you had problems. Uh, you didn't create them, but the government didn't want to let this go. What was the story behind that? And, and how did you finally, how did you finally wrestle back your work, your book, Government Gangsters from the Deep State? Well, can I just take a second to congratulate you on oh, your new show, Words That Matter, and on my new role in Epoch, being able to come on these shows more That's often. Great. And in Modern Day Book Club, the idea is so yeah. simple, and no one's Damn. doing it. So this is got to awesome. come back on again. Can't wait. We're not just going to have authors talking about their own books. We're going to have authors talking about books that they like. It could be old books. So oh, that's I'm gonna, great. I'm going to get you to come on and talk about all, all sorts yeah. of all sorts of books. You can tie it to basically anything. And of course, you you are in my introduction. I forgot to mention you are uh, one of Epoch TV's uh, shining lights, one of our luminaries. You and Jan <laughs> with Cash's Corner. What a fantastic show! So no, the the, the team at Epoch is great, I, I, it's, and it's um, an honor and a, and I mean, a tremendous amount really. of fun. And I give him a lot of credit in the book, um, as I do you, uh, for having the courage to write that story in the mm -hmm. first place, because nobody wanted to write about the truth back then. They wanted to write about things that made them popular. Mm -hmm. And you could have sold out and made millions and uh, castigated Devin and I like so many others did. But, you, you know, you started this mission and that was the you know impetus for me was what I learned from you and Devin was you just got to tell the story. Yeah. And it's not about selling a million copies. And, 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 and I'm so glad the plot against the president was wildly successful because the truth you put in there has educated Americans to this day. And that's what the Biden administration, the deep state don't want you to right. hear. So they took my manuscript because I was in government. I had to submit it back to them for review and they took it. And I've, I listen, I'm okay with that process. Two to three mm -hmm. months to look at you know, privacy stuff, information. Just make sure you, you dot your I's, cross mm -hmm. your T's, and don't put out anyone's home address like Adam Schiff does. Yeah. <laughs> and 10 months later, they called and they were like, oh, you know, we sent it to nine agencies and departments for review. I said, nine? Mm -hmm. I was like, I was the guy that ran this on the other end when I was in government. We sent it to yeah. one, the last home agency you were at. Why nine? And they were like, oh, well, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there that needs classification review and privacy stuff. Long story short, I sued them in federal court because they were just like never going to give me my manuscript. And this, this book is so heavy. It's so weighted by the uh, heavy ink redactions that the Biden administration, when they bent the knee, look at that. Do you see? Do you even see one? Do you even see one? So, you know, it was all a ruse. They said it was classified. It's not. It had the truth. I was inspired by you and Devin and our team to be like, look, no matter what, you got to put that to paper. And I think that's what they were afraid of. And I'm so blessed that it's out today. And, and a side shout out to governmentgangsters.com, which is signing books, removing books. Um, if you're a smelly Walmart Trump supporter, go to governmentgangsters.com and get your copy today. <laughs> um, so what, um, what kind of response? So they held it up. 
What kind of response yeah. do you expect from the government gangsters now? What are people like? Um, what are people like Adam Schiff going to say? What's James Comey going to say? What's uh, what's your uh, what's Bill <laughs> ba- William Barr, former Attorney General William Barr, going to say? You know, I address a lot of those characters in my yeah. book because. As, they, as we say in Washington, they were they were punching down at me when I was uh, in the administration. And I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat. What my, my what my mission was, was to call out government gangsters by name and title who failed the mission of serving in government. That's it. And how they did it. And more importantly, how we fix it. So guys like Comey and Barr and all, they're going to get back together. They don't care about conservatism or saving America. They care about the D.C. entrenchment and how they're going to get their names back in the Hollywood headlights and how they're going to get glorified on CNN and get these big contracts. They'll probably call me like a Trump loyalist. And I always laugh at that. I'm like, what does that mean? That I exposed your FBI corruption, you James Comey, that I exposed you, Bill Barr's lethargic behavior as our number one law enforcement officer, where you failed to prosecute what we are now seeing as the Biden family crime syndicate when you had all that evidence? And you failed to prosecute the Comeys and McCabe's and Strzok's of the world who broke the law to illegally surveil the United States president and his surrogates. I mean, when these people attack you, they use hyperbole. And I'm sure Adam Schiff is, you know, maybe he'll use it for a fun. Actually, you know what? I'm going to send Adam Schiff a signed <laughs> copy of my book, Who's Office You should send one, you, and send, one to Eric, I'm gonna say it's from send one to Eric Swalwell as well. Since this is a guy. Yeah, yeah, no, great yeah, idea. I didn't yeah. See, this is great. I never thought of that's brilliant. I'm doing that today. Yeah. Um, but you know what? It's 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 your show. It's what you yeah. talked about being over the top. You know, when they're shelling yeah. you, and boy, did you get shelled for plotting? Well, against the you president. know where that title comes from. It comes from what you and and uh, Congressman Nunes said all the time. It's like, yeah, you know, you're over the target when when you know when you're taking uh, when you're taking fire. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's what's going to continue to happen. Look, I'm just in my third day of fourth, first week of the book release here. Um, President Trump, you know, was kind enough to launch it on Truth Social. Oh, that's great. It busted into the, it busted into the top 10. You know, I'm, I'm just very lucky to have the support of folks like you and the president and Devin to help get this thing out there. Um, and, and, but it's not, it's not about, you know, you know me, I don't write. That's not my wheelhouse. This was this was hard for me to do. This was really hard, um, and and basically it's it's about the people that came together to take out the deep state in pieces, and when you do it on a bigger scale, then we America can destroy the deep state because it's not. When I was writing the book, they were still kind of surreptitious and clandestine. Now the deep state is just they're on CNN, they're wide open. They don't care because it's the get Trump ethos that they think is constitutional and they use it to break the law. Look, they surveilled me when I was Devin Staffer. We didn't find out for four years, but I had to file a federal lawsuit last week against Director Ray, the FBI, DOJ, Rod Rosenstein. Republicans actually came after us because we were exposing their corruption and illegally surveilled us. Senior staffers in Congress. That's the mentality of government gangsters. It's not Republican or Democrat. And and we can basically um, expose them by reading this book. That we all love to hear you speak, uh, whether you're talking about Adam Schiff, whether you're talking about Eric Swalwell, Comey, McCabe, all of these guys, is that you are ribbing them. I mean, you are really giving it to them, right? But it's not just that. It's like you see them as ridiculous, cartoonish figures wearing clown shoes, right? It's the clown shoes, uh, Keystone cops, right? A lot of people are very worried. They look around, understandably, people look around. I mean, these lunatics have, have uh, have indicted the former president of the United States, the front runner for the uh, for the Republican nomination for 2024, they're scary too. But you have the the balance and the uh, perspective to make fun of them. Are they ludicrous? I mean, you've also said that. I remember interviewing you before. You said, "Look, these people like uh, McCabe and and Lisa Page and all of them are they're actually uh, good lawyers and they're smart people." So what perspective should we have as Americans who are fighting the deep state to both laugh at them and to take them seriously? What what guidance can you give us there? 
Yeah, I think you always, when you're taking on such a rogue animal that is the deep state and such a big animal, it would be dismissive to call them stupid. They're mm -hmm. not, they're smart, they're evil. Right. And they're motivated and they have a team, not just in government, but they have a team in the corrupt fake news mafia to mm -hmm. carry out their initiatives. And more than that, that team will go out and execute the initiative to take out Lee Smith or Devin yeah. or Cash or anyone that dares to talk about the corruption yeah. that the deep state is authoring. And when you have folks like McCabe, Strzok and other things, what I learned from you know President Trump and a couple other folks is it's OK to laugh along the way. Yeah. It's OK. You know, the, remember, your job is to serve the American people, yeah. but having a little humorous fun is okay. And we don't do the crazy stuff they do where they behead people and hold right. up, you know, President Trump's head with blood dripping yeah. off of it. We call him watermelon head, or we <laughs> come up with fun nicknames. Yeah. And, and that's okay, in my opinion, as a private citizen to say that about someone, not because of their physical looks, but because of how they have destroyed our constitution. Right. And we're attacking these people, not because we dislike them for some personality trait. I dislike Comey and McCabe and Strzok and Page for lighting our constitution on fire, unlawfully surveilling American citizens, using a cover-up operation, and falsely blaming Donald Trump as a Russian asset. And Adam Schiff is the one who bought and sold their story to the fake news, knowing it was fraudulent. So when we call them the lovers, or when we call, you know, I don't even think we have a name for Comey or McCabe. We probably should come up with one. Good idea. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll call them the uh, two twins of idiocy. Yeah. But when you have these people, it helps to highlight them in a way that translates. Because look, FISA. I mean, there's like point zero two percent of the world that knows what FISA is, and, and they're not supposed to. So you got to be able to translate it. So I don't mind. Yeah doing it for people who are deserving of it. When we call <laughs> Swalwell Fang Fang, you know what people think of? Yeah. It has nothing to do with denigrating Chinese Americans. It has everything to do with selling yeah. our state secrets, either for money or otherwise, to a CCP Fine. spy while this man is on the House Intelligence Committee. I mean, just think about that story. Right. What if that were Devin Nunes? You know, or, or somebody else on the Republican side is being chauffeured around by a CCP minion. Right. Th they would put him in prison. And Eric Swalwell comes out and says, oh, the FBI exonerated me. No, yeah. they didn't. You said that and the media picked it up. Well, but look, you, we you love, uh, I mean, I believe that you still do because, you, I mean, you worked uh, at DOJ, uh, at Maine Justice in Washington for a while. You yeah. were a, a, a federal terrorism prosecutor. You worked with, you know, you wor worked with tier one units uh, in, in in the military, but also you worked with a lot of FBI guys that you really that you love and you admire and you respect. What ha what happened? Did you see things turn rotten while you were there? Had the rot set in before? Um, because that's what people want to know, especially on on the right side of the aisle. This is the law and order party. People who looked up to the FBI, people who grew up, uh, and maybe I'm yeah. dating myself, but grew up with, uh, you know, grew up with all of the, with Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., right? With uh, with Elliot Ness, that's a, a, a little older than me. But what yeah. happened? You saw it there. Yeah, what I talk about in my book, and I think it's worth hmm. exploring, is the originations of what we call the deep state. And you're right. It was the law enforcement community, the traditional yeah. Republicans, the Comeys and the McCabes that destroyed it. And what they did was they were a smaller class in the leadership sectors of government 10, 15, 20 years ago, and would kind of poke their heads out when something was completely off the rails. Like the first time they caught the Senate right. spying on, uh, they, they caught yeah, the CIA yeah. spying on senators, right? You remember that? You remember the addition, things like that. But what happened was, there was, a, there was a, a catalyst, a unifying moment for these actors entrenched, be it FBI, DOJ, DOD, CIA, NSA, AG, whatever. Hmm. Donald Trump walking down the escalator. Right. It, for, and I, don't, I still don't know the exact reason, Lee. I can't tell you what it is, but their universal hatred of this guy. And as he yeah. inched closer to the presidency, once he got elected, they completely lost it. And... 
now we know they had started the campaign to take him out at least a year and a half before he ever got to the White House with the Russiagate narrative. And you can't do it alone. So they were able to claw together the pre steps and Strzok and everybody else of the world. And we saw that metastasize once Donald Trump took the presidency in the form of mm. Mark Esper, Gina Haspel, Nakasone, Mark Milley. And I don't mm. just mean the cabinet folks. And I list them by name and title in the book, like 80 to 100 of them. And what they did was they failed to get Trump before he got to the White House. And then once he got there, you got the Charmellas of the world who are conjuring up a bogus impeachment based on information that was totally false. So <laughs> yeah, right. it's Russiagate 27.0, you know, whether it's Hunter Biden's laptop or the 51 Intel letter or the Biden, you know, pay for play scheme, or what have you. They are always looking up ways to rig presidential elections. That was a universal theme for them because Donald Trump has been their opponent. Now, I don't know what happens when Donald Trump right. is not the president anymore or doesn't win the next election. Maybe they shut off. But what we've learned is this entrenched class exists in too many places in government. Right. This is one of the things that, uh, that you uh, and Devin and President Trump helped illuminate. What we want to pick up with, we're, we got to cut away for less than a minute because the folks watching on Facebook mm -hmm. or YouTube uh, we're inviting them to get the heck off of Facebook and YouTube and join us exclusively at Epoch yes. TV. When we return, I want to talk about both the past and the future. I want to ask you, Cash, if if this was going on before Donald mm -hmm. Trump, uh, and I want to ask, let's talk about the likelihood, I believe, of another Trump presidency. Will Donald Trump, will Cash Patel, Will Devin Nunes be able to finally force the uh, the deep state back into uh, back behind the gates of hell from whence it escaped? Uh, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, make the jump to Epoch TV exclusively. We'll be back in less than a minute. See you then. The center of corruption is the Department of Justice. Charles Grassley has been going after them, identifying how the FBI and DOJ withheld evidence from the American people, from Congress, for six years regarding Biden family corruption. Where is the rest of Congress? Senator Grassley and joined by Chairman Comer, who's on the House side, they wrote a letter basically to the FBI and said, we are aware of the existence of a form that contains allegations regarding a bribery scheme involving Joe Biden himself. Then it turns out, hey, the document's real. They got it. There were 17 phone calls that the source had recorded involving Joe Biden or Hunter Biden talking about the bribery scheme. The FBI redacted that information to the American people. This is the FBI we're talking about. This is corruption of the president we're talking about. It's you get the documents, you get the witnesses, you get them under oath, you move forward. You don't play on their terms, you play on your terms.